So we're going to be talking about ranges. Last we talked about ranges, it was about defining them. Okay. We always look at ranges and mark the top here, right? That's one part of the range. You got backside frontside combinations, all this kind of different stuff here and backside frontside combinations and, uh, and all that. So we've seen ranges as to where we have a level and um, we are picking, say, say something like this here. We have the top of the weekly there. We have the, uh, the bottom of it here. So, right, that's kind of the range and everything in between it has uh, different levels, right? So you have, for example, a level here, which is a daily backside hold. You'd have some kind of frontside hold combination inside of here, right? You'd have some kind of frontside hold combination inside of here, which looks like that got tested there. You've got backside here. And then you've got some kind of secondary front side in here as to where this becomes a front side backside combination, right? So, so everybody's familiar with those, those ranges and the way those ranges work. But we also learned ranges in the past as, as kind of when we started talking about hold levels. At first, it was greedy and strong uh, like this. So, so first, we had strong hold levels, which is the backside, which caused big bounces, and we called them greedy. From that point on, we then drew a line to, to, to say that, okay, backside like this has a strong bounce, a front side has a uh, greedy hold level. So we, we, we defined those further into front side, back side, understanding that this would be the, the first area that gets tested and causes a large bounce. Second area would be a greedier part of the move. Oh, sorry, I guess that would be more of here. Be a greedier part of the move as to where this is a backside greedy level. This is a, a front side, or sorry, backside strong level. This is a front side greedy level, right? The reason we broke that down into two hemispheres to start is because that same two hemisphere rule uh, applies to ranges as well. So when you're looking at, at these moves and we're going to delete, actually we're not going to delete the whole chart. We're just going to delete these three levels. When you look at the whole entire piece of the move, you are looking at the range that's being tested. So, so kind of what that means is, and we can start right here. So, so this is like the, 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 the break level on the, the quote unquote break level on a different time frame. So you would have something like a backside um, here, a front side here, and then some kind of range combination in here. So that's the first thing we're going to do is kind of just go in here, look at this. So you would have had like a backside right here, which you can see held the move down. You would have had a front side somewhere maybe somewhere between this candle and this candle, there'd be a front side somewhere, J just simply because it can't go over the break level. And then this is the break level then, you know, as we go down in time frames here, you're gonna, you're gonna find different areas where you have the greediest points, right? Like here, for example, would be possibly a front side or maybe it's still like on a different time frame. So yeah, okay, fine, right here. So you've got like your backside front side combination. This represents one entire range. So inside of a backside front side combination, you also have a range, right? So you have to think of tests on candles or, or tests on these backside front sides as testing the range, okay? So you have a different part of this range that gets tested. So once a backside of a range gets tested, you have to realize there's possibly only one range left to be tested in that trade. And it's why we broke it down into greedy and strong. And I started training you guys to have... Um, this, this idea of two levels in your head, right? Greedy, strong, backside, front side. It, it flows through the ranges as to where you test one part of the range to test the next part of the range. You know, the same thing is happening right here in a move, right? You're testing the backside of a range and then the front side of a range here. And you're, you're coming up to this range here and now you're testing this upper range here. So you have kind of two spots in this range you're going to test, right? You have the backside test and then you have the front side test. So when we look at ranges, Ranges can have two tests, okay? So, so this is the first thing that is important to know. Ranges can have two tests. So I think a lot of the time people are asking, oh, well, which level is it going to test? Is it going to test this one? Is it going to test this one? Is it going to test this one? You have to realize that this encompasses one complete range. This encompasses one complete range, right? So, so this is one range. This is one range. This is one range. Inside of these ranges, you can have two tests. Now you could go to a backside and test that, fall down and then go and test a front side and that's now a tested range, right? So when you're thinking about this and we're looking at greediest levels and, and you're, you're thinking about where these trades exist, okay? You have to realize when a backside range gets tested, the next test is not going to be, oh, the next level necessarily. Sometimes you have a scenario like this. And actually, that's no, not sometimes, it's most of the times you have a scenario like this where you have 
a marquee of tests that could possibly be done. You have, okay, that's the back side, and then there is a front side right here. So that means that's going to test next. And then there is another back side, front side combination here, which means you're going to have a test here, which has its own back side right here. So you're going to have all of these levels. And then even there, you're going to say, well, what's the greediest level? Uh, so, so then you can justify this being a, a good entry because that's the greediest level. Now we can even dig down into time frames because this is a backside here. This guy's a front side to that backside. This is a backside to this front side, which is also the greediest level, which is uh, a backside front side combination of one of these two levels. So if this is the backside to the smaller range, then this is the front side, then this is the backside to that front side. So you could have like a whole marquee of levels, but when you go over, like what's being hit and what's not being hit, right? This is because ranges although we have multiple levels like this and we have multiple areas where something can be tested, ranges have two tests that they can go through. So when you're looking at this and you're, you're picking out all your levels, ranges will always have two levels that they can test. So we're not going to have this whole kind of dance of levels where you go up and test everything. The important thing to, let's, and, and let's delete all of these ones here. Uh, the important thing to know is that if one part of the range gets tested, the next part is going to get tested. So, so in this scenario, where the backside has been tested or, or the backside here has been tested, you're going to have that piece of the range is already tested, which means the, back, the first half of the range is tested. You can now go and test anything above that when you start breaking over the polarity of, of this level. So if we were to go back to the weekly, we simply can say, well, there's probably a front side somewhere in here. I don't know if we can go back to here. You know, we're just going to take the break level in this example because we know that the break level can't be hit if this move is going down. So we simply want to see where the moments of polarity can be, which is your whole levels, right? So, so then you can start dissecting this. And, and obviously, this can't be the uh, backside of that range, right? It's, uh, it's outside of what the uh, whole level is, because the whole level on the weekly, I believe, is actually right here. So we can go to this, and we can pin the whole level, repin the whole level, and see where that exists. So, so this was obviously testing something in here. You know, the trail is that this right here is testing something in this right here, which is testing something in this right here like this, and then on a smaller time frame like this, and so forth. So, so we can't actually pin it to that weekly base point. But what we can do is we can say one part of the range has been tested. Now we're going after the next part of the range inside of this, whatever this is. So we can start to uh, look at different time frames here, and we can say, okay, it could be right here. So it could be that one right there, right? Let's uh, keep going through time frames. Okay, it could be, as we go through time frames, four hour. This was tested right there. This guy was tested right there. So you kind of have something between the top right here. So the top of that candle here, right here, like the untested piece of this, right? It clearly can't be here because we've already tested way above that. So we can just simply leave this back here and we can continue to dig through timeframes, right? And, and we can start to look for the spot that says, okay, has this been tested? Yeah, it's pretty close to being tested. So it could be this, right? This is what was, was tested. So this is the backside of that front side range. So you have two levels that can possibly be tested now. This was tested as well here. This was not tested. This is the level we hit. So that's fine. This can't be the level, right? Inside of the range, that's tested. Inside of this range, this is tested. So it could be here or it could be right here. So it's going to be one of these two levels, in my opinion. It's going to be either this, and we can zoom in here and make sure we pin this properly, or, or this here. So, so you have kind of two pieces of this that can be tested. I could even go into the 15 minutes and see if there's something really, really obvious that I'm possibly missing. So this has been tested. This has not right here. So it could be this backside, this front side, and those are untested levels. It could possibly be here, but I really doubt it. I would say it's either here, right, like this or this. It's going to be one of those two levels. I think those are pretty, uh, pretty accurate because I think this was already tested. So this is, this is going to be pretty accurate. So when we go back to the weekly and we're saying, okay, well, what can possibly be tested next? You have to realize that you have two ranges in this move, okay? And just like we have a front side, back side, we have two ranges and, and that, the kind of that combination of two things, right? So you go to the daily here and you say, yeah, this one's been tested, so you're at one of those two levels. Um, you could go greedier. Technically, you could go greedier. You could you know, go all the way up to some, some crazy, crazy candle uh, on this. Like You could go all the way up to here to this uh, 99.59, I suppose. So that could be a third possibility. You know, As chart architecture is unfolding, at least you've got the three correct levels. And to realize that only one of these is going to be tested is, is the important thing. Right? So like, what does that look like? Okay, this was already tested. That's fine. 
it creates its final little hold right here. So we hit that final hold. We, uh, we pull back. That gives you your final trend, which is going to give you your final hold level right here. You break over this moment of polarity, which is represented here, like it's represented on the entirety of the trade, right? Because this is the hold level that was hit. So we've already hit that and we created our own little hold level there. So, you know, this is the moment of polarity. Once this breaks, we're going straight up after this range. And that range is going to be tested one time because the first part of the range was tested. Now the second part of the range is going to be tested. So you can see the moment of polarity that exists prior to going up to that level, because if this level is already hit right here, it has its own independent hold level, which is polarity, right? Because if this breaks, you gap straight up to the next range and then the range is represented here. In this move, you are going to have two range tests, just like you always have a backside frontside test, which can also have micro backside frontside holds inside of it. You're also going to have two range part, parts of the range get tested. Now, now, again, one of these will be tested and that will be it. You're not going to go and test one, two, three, four. I mean, it can happen, but it's pretty rare. But typically what you're going to see is you're going to see a range tested once or sorry, a range tested once here. And then if the range keeps pushing, test it twice. And that second test is, is, is the polarity of the range, right? So you're going to see more, more often a range get tested once, pull back, and then a range get tested again. But in this move, it, it's not still moving up. It's simply just testing its range, right? Like that's, that's the key piece of information here. And it can be any one of these levels that we have marked and, and they're each going to represent something different, right? So like, let's go here and they're each going to represent something different, right? This is obviously going to try to break the move up. The greedier the, the, the move goes, the less points of, of polarity it's going to have in the move. If it, if it goes higher in its range, it's not going to have anything left to hold it down. So, so the higher it goes without breaking the move, the bigger the polarity is, but also the greedier the entry and the better the, uh, the, better the short, right? So it, it kind of all works in, in one direction. It's kind of a unilateral move. It's going to go straight up. It's going to go straight up and it's going to hit its appropriated level and pull straight down. Or maybe it goes you know, straight up here and uh, you know, holds this range and then creates a trend and breaks because this is the break level of the move, right? So it scoops up even further. But really, the, some of the key information is to realize that this has a range, just like this had a range, just like this had a range. So what does this look like? This looks like the backside, frontside, backside, frontside combination, right? So, so it's the same thing you're seeing across different time frames. You're just seeing the different parts of the range, just like a weekly in itself is going to have different parts of the range. Most likely, you go after the different parts of the range. So you, you have the uh, front side here, the back side. You go after the back side. You go after some kind of combination level, and then you go after the greediest part of the range. It's, it's the same thing we look at on all moves. All we're doing here is looking at it on a weekly candle. There's uh, no difference here because it's all actually the same. Yeah, as, as you can see, the back side, front side, back side, front side combination, BF, back side, front side combination. So it's the same thing here, right? You're, you're going to have the, uh, the testing of, of this range. You're going to have the testing of this range. And this can be like the intermediary range where it can have its own independent test. But really these represent two pieces because two, two pieces can exist here. Only the front side and back side can exist. Once the uh, back side is gone, then you have a new back side here, which is a, a back side to this, which is a back side front side combination level as, as I like to call it. So really here you have two range tests. You have range here and then you have the upper range here. And then inside of all of these time frames, you have uh, two ranges as well, right? So. You, you do have those, those two pieces of the range, right? So uh, going, going into this, and we can take a look at this here. It's very likely to see something in here get tested if this, well, it, it is going to happen. You are going to see something here tested if this uh, hold level in here breaks, right? Even right here, you can see that this was already tested there. So, you know, it can't be this upper range. This already tested here. So it's range test here, range test here. We haven't tested this yet. So, so again, this is completely expected and uh, normal in the move. Completely expected. And where you're going to see that happen is you are going to see that same thing happen right here, right? Like you're going to see the same range combination test right here. Like you've got this part of the range right here, which is, I believe, a little greedier in this move. Right? The greedier part of this range. So if this is distribution, it's going to test backside front side range like this backside front side right so when you see this there's a backside test so that's backside front side which would actually be here would be your front side 
So if you have levels, you're going to be like this in front side here because this was already tested and moved through. I suppose this is on a different time frame right here. Maybe this is an hourly or a half an hour candle. But anyways, that was the, the backside. This is the front side of that range. And then you have some kind of backside front side combination level here. And then this is the next greediest part of the move. So, so you can see the laddering down. And the two tests of this range is you know, going to happen. Just like on the weekly, how we have the, uh, the first weekly range back here is tested, right? It's tested right there. The second part of that range is tested, which is the front side, which is right here, right? So let's walk through that. Right here would be the same thing that we just looked at on the weekly. The back side is tested, right? And then you have the front side to that back side, which gives you a back side, front side level here, right? And, and, and then that just gives you your simple uh, ladder of the move right there. Which, which gives you the same information. Again, th this is one part of the range, right? You have to, you have to look at this in, in terms of ranges and not levels. You have to think of this in ranges because if we were to go to a bigger time frame, this is specifically just representing one range, right? Like you can see backside here, front side here, some kind of front side, backside combination here. So, so once this gets tested, it is supposed to go after this range and it is supposed to have those two tests in the range, right? This is the same thing. So you can go to the 15 minute here, take a look. And, and when this is tested, it's clearly creating its own next hold level. Like, uh, try that again. And it's going to have its own range right here, which is tested, which is going to have its next part right here. So this, this thing is laddering down. So, so like this is already gone. We can just get rid of that because it's a tested level. So we don't, we don't even need it on the screen. You know, let's, let's do it like this. We're, we're kind of assuming we are here in the move, right? We're not going to use a report tool. We're just going to scroll through it. We are going to do this and this is tested here, whatever the, whatever the level is here, right here, I suppose. And we don't need that one. And, and so we have the next untested level. So yeah, you have an untested level here. You have an untested level there. Uh, so that gets tested there. The next piece of this move is, oh, we actually don't even need to mark a new one. What we're going to do is we're actually going to move it over. So the next part of this level is here there's nothing left. So, so you can see the polarity gapping up. Like you can see it. There's nothing left after this, right? Even if you were to mark your trend from here to here, you can see uh, that's fine. We can use this or this. It doesn't matter. It, it, as long as the trend is there, we don't need to be uh, overtly accurate with it. But if we want to be, that's fine too. So, so you can see clearly this is the untested level. It's breaking over top of that. It, it, it breaks over top of that to test the next piece of its range. So, so simply just test the next piece of its range, just, just as it should, right? Because you have to realize all these things have multiple tests of range inside them. So you're going to have six and seven and eight levels in a trade, right? But if we simply take all this noise and garbage off, you're going to, and, and you simply pull back to here, you're going to have a ton of levels. Like if, if you were here in the moment, you'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't know where to trade because I've got this level here. Well, that would be inaccurate because it's tested. And then you have this one here. This is not tested. And you'd have this here. That's not tested. And you'd have this range here and uh, this here is kind of broken over, so we don't want to use that one. You could have this here. What else could you have? Possibly a bigger time frame right here. And so the only one we can actually delete is this one. Now we actually have another one right here. Yeah, okay, we can leave this one on. Uh, let's not. Do we leave this one on? Let's not leave that one on. Let's take that one off. Okay, so let's take this one off because it's kind of tested already. So, right? And then front side, back side to that front side, which is a back side, front side combination to this. So this is the real back side. That's the front side. You have a front side here. You have a back side here, which means this is uh, also the same level as this. So this is kind of acting as a back side, front side, back side, front side combination, which is also the back side to this front side, which is a back side, front side combination, which possibly you could even then have this here on a smaller time frame. 